All right, good morning, fourth graders. Happy Monday. Um, we're looking at lesson 7-9. We're, we're identifying number patterns today, identifying and generating number patterns. This right here is 252 in your math journal. And the first thing that they want you to do is just take a look at, we've got some different arrays here. We got a small one, a little bigger, a little bigger, and a little bigger. There's four different arrays there. So array one, two, three, and four. And what they want you to do there is to see if you can kind of figure out what the pattern is. What's happening from this step to this step to this step to this step. So take a minute, pause me, and think about what's actually happening here. What are we doing? Okay? All right. So something that you can notice, or that kids usually notice, and we'd have a conversation about this if we were in class together, but we're not. So some things that kids usually notice is that each time it gets a step taller. And some kids also notice that each time it gets a step longer as well. And that's the basis on what this actually is. Um, kids will say, oh, it's two and then it's six and then it's 12 and then it's 20. And that's also true. But what's actually happening here is that we have an array, okay? And arrays have dimensions. And the dimensions of this first array is 1 times 2. And this one is 2 times 3. And this is a two, or 3 by 4. And this is a 4 by 5. So just think for a second, what do you think the next array is going to be? 5 by 6. Because all we're doing is we're taking the two counting numbers, and then keeping the second one and multiplying it by the next one. The two stays multiply by three. The three stays multiply by four. The four stays multiply by five. The five stays multiply by six. And then they want you to draw the array. Now my array for this one probably isn't going to be quite as nice because of the way that the smart board's calibrated. And you know that my smart board has that funky spot to it. So I'm going to do the best that I can you should make a five by six array. As you can see, I've got my five tall there, and it should go out six. So go ahead and finish your array, just like I'm finishing mine. All right, not so bad. Uh, had to fight with the calibration a little bit there. So if this is 5 by 6, what would the next one be? Of course, that would be 6 by 7. So it's going to be 6 tall and 7 long. Go ahead and make that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just got to finish the rows and columns. There you go. There's six by seven. You try the next one on your own. Give me a pause, and when you're ready to check yours, you can repeat play for me. All right, so the last one is a, that you can fit on here anyway, is a seven by eight. It's gonna be one higher, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by one, two, three, four, six, seven, and my eight's a little off the screen, so you're gonna have to imagine that I could fit this whole grid on here, but you guys can fit it on yours. probably actually have to, when you do yours, make a little circle. Smart board works a little bit better that way, probably. So that's what you can fit on here. But now if you look, everybody good with this? If you're not, hit pause, and then you can finish it. And uh, then we're going to look at the next one. So now what we're looking at here is if you look, these are all the numbers that are up there. 
The first array was 2, the next one was 6, then 12, then 20, then 30, then 42. What we're making is we're making rectangular numbers. And that, how we do that is by multiplying each consecutive counting number. 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7 is as far as they get. So we know that 6 times 7 was this 42. Well, we need to get to the tenth one. So that means we need four more rectangular numbers. And the next one would have been 7 times 8. And that would go here. Then we would have 8 times 9. Then 9 times 10. And 10 times 11. 8 times 9 goes here. 9 times 10 goes here. 10 times 11 goes there. So okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to try and solve 7 times 8, 8 times 9, 9 times 10, and 10 times 11 and write those in. When you have those, hit play and I'll go over them with you. Alright, 7 times 8. I know the rhyme that we use for that, or the little saying, it's like a march. 5, 6, 7, 8. 56 equals 7 times 8. 7 times 8 is... 56. 8 times 9. What I would do there is I would just think about the 8. What's 1 less than that? That's 7. 7 plus what is 9? 2. 9 times 10, that's really easy. 9 times 1 is 9. Add a 0. Here you can go 1 times 11 is 11. And add your 0. So those are the numbers you should have come up with. How did you get your answers? Uh, that might be a little hard for you to write down. Uh, I've kind of explained it a couple times, but here's what I would say. Uh, we multiplied together each counting number by the next counting number. And then I'd give an example. I would go 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4. And then that's, that's probably good enough. So make sure you get that down. And we're going to go on to our next pattern. Now keep these numbers in mind. You have these written down. I'm not going to be able to because I've got to slide this. But 2, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42, 56, 72, etc. So now we're going to look down here. 2 equals 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. 2 plus 4 plus 6. What would come next? 8. And that makes sense because we know that 2, 4, and 6 together make 12. This is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. When we went through 8, we had 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. You give this one a try on your own. Okay? Really what the pattern is here is we're just adding the next even number. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Next one would be 12. Now I know that through 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that this equals 30. So it's just like adding 12 to 30, which would be 42. Describe the pattern. We are adding even numbers each step we add the next even number go ahead and get that written down
Okay, so I'm going to leave this. Not the writing here, because I've got to be able to slide it. But I'm going to leave this while we look at the next one. Okay, let me slide it back up. C says, what do you notice about the number of add-ins and the rectangular number? So when you look at that, what you should notice from up here, 2, 4, there's going to be 2, 6, 12, 8, there's going to be 2, 4, I can't talk, 2, 6, 12, 20, that's the same thing as it is up here. So when we have one add-in, like here, you just have one add-in, you get the first even number. For the second rectangular number, we have two add-ins. We get six. When we have three add-ins, we get the third rectangular number. And when we have four add-ins, two, four, six, eight, that's four add-ins, two, four, six, eight, that's four, we get the fourth add-in. So what we should notice, now I'm going to erase these because we don't need them, what you should notice with the pattern and the number of add-ins is that the number of add-ins, add-ins are just simply the things being added if, if you were a little confused by that. The number of add-ins we have is the number or is the is I gotta think about the way I want to say this is that step for our rectangular numbers. So, for example, if we did the fifth step of even numbers, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10, our fifth, if you look back up at the top, your fifth rectangular number had 30. And it says, describe a similar pattern with square numbers. Well, we haven't done that, and that, that's kind of confusing. But I'm just going to show you this. You don't need to necessarily write this down. But square numbers would be just a little bit different. So, for example, the first square number is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. And if I were to make that as an array, it would just look like one dot. The next one would be, uh, so watch this. 1 equals 1. 1 plus 3 equals 4. Well, if it's a square number, that's the same as doing 2 times 2 equals 4. So I'm going to make another square here. See how 2 by 2 would be 4? Now, 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. Well, a square number is multiplying the number times itself, so 3 times 3 is 9. Okay. If you notice, this time we're adding odd numbers, just like we did with the even numbers, but this time we're adding odd numbers. So the next one would be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. And 9 plus 7 is 16. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. I'm going to do this one in a different color so you can see the array. 1, 2, 3, 4. And believe me, it would continue on. The next one you'd add 9, that would get you to 25. 5 times 5 is 25, so it would be a 5 by 5 array. So with odd numbers, when you add each subsequent odd number, you get a square number. And a square number just makes a square array. Where when we added all the even numbers, each subsequent even number we added made a rectangular array. So I know that this is probably fast, and I know it's new. Don't worry about it too much. We'll do probably a review sheet sometime this week on this. Your assignment for today is your math boxes. And math boxes today are on page 200.
and 54. 254. So, looking at the first one. 246 pairs of eyeglasses have to be packed in boxes of six per box. 369 pairs of sunglasses have to be packed in boxes of nine. How many boxes are needed for each type? It says circle in, fill in the circle next to true or false. So what you need to do here is divide 246 divided by six and 369 divided by nine. And then read the questions. More boxes are needed for the eyeglasses and the sunglasses. You're going to have to look at what the answer is there. Uh, letter B, more boxes are needed for the sunglasses than the eyeglasses. That's kind of the opposite. Or the same number are needed, or you can't tell. All right, over here, three friends went berry picking, each with the same size bucket. Susan collected five twelfths of a bucket of berries, Barbara six twelfths, and Edward eight twelfths. How many buckets of berries did the three friends collect? This plus this plus this, and then the number of buckets. Now you're going to get an improper fraction because I know that 6 plus 8 is already more than 12. Remember to divide that and make it a mixed number rather than an improper fraction. Okay, uh, on this one, pick one. I don't care which one you do, pick one. Do one division, partial quotients. Over here on number four, uh, I think this one's pretty easy because it's just four times 5,000, four times 600, four times. You're going to do letter B because I think that where we need help is doing when we have more than one number here uh, when we're multiplying. Uh, number five says explain how you used equations to solve problem two. So just, that just means explain how you use this to solve that. All right, so that's it for today. Um, and I will post the answers for this tomorrow. Have a good day.